Good morning everybody and welcome back to our online worship for the first Sunday of Lent. It's really good that we can be back together worshipping in this format. So as we seek to keep Lent faithfully, let us worship together now. The Lord our Redeemer be with you and also with you. Let us pray. God of our days and years, we set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. Let us hear our Lord's blessing on those who follow him. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after their righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 9, beginning at the 8th verse. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you. As many as came out of the ark, I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those whose way is through. 
Testament reading is taken from Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ben has just read to us from the opening verses of Mark's Gospel, where we hear how the adult Jesus emerges from the unremarkable, unremarkable village of Nazareth to be baptised by John at the River Jordan. Mark's narrative sets quite an urgent pace, doesn't it? With no lingering over details, we jump right into the deep end. It goes to the heart of the drama, the clash of the kingdoms of light and darkness, with Jesus in the midst. Jesus has opened up the pathway and removed all the obstacles that lie between us and God's kingdom, enabling us to follow him as Lord into life with God forever. Mark's intense, action-packed scenes offer insights into how God's kingdom advances as he presents Jesus' distinctive servant leadership. It's actually possible to read through the whole of Mark's gospel in one sitting, such as its brevity. This is something I hope to be able to do this Lent. But rest returning to the story, as Jesus is baptised, heaven opens up to resound with God's voice, expressing deep delight in the beloved Son. Yet this is before Jesus' public ministry has begun. Human beings tend to approve of others because of what they have achieved. Here, Jesus is cherished not for what he has done, but for who he is in relationship to the Father. Jesus is no self-sufficient military leader, nor an ambitious business executive. He is fundamentally a beloved son. We might assume that God's commendation and the Spirit's anointing would lead Jesus straight into proclaiming God's kingdom. Instead, the Spirit drives him into the wilderness. Jesus is brought face to face with danger in wild and dark places. Far from being an escape, the Spirit's anointing has equipped Jesus to encounter such vulnerability in faith. Jesus' obedience is honed under opposition and temptation, away from the limelight. When he returns to Galilee, this undergirds the clarity authority and integrity of his kingdom call to repentance and baptism. As we seek to serve our master, we may be tempted to set store by what we do and have achieved, whether it's spending hours in prayer or what we know, or our qualifications and status perhaps. Yet the power and energy to minister comes from God's spirit 
and the capacity to go beyond ourselves comes from knowing that we are loved as God's children. Jesus moves forward knowing he is fully accepted, beloved of the Father. God's gaze upon us is as full of love for us as it is at the sight of Jesus. There is nothing we can do to make God love us more, nothing we can do to make God love us less. Receiving this truth paradoxically only strengthens our desire to serve our Saviour. Perhaps you have had an intense experience of God coming close that has been followed by challenging and difficult times. If so, you need not be alarmed. Being in the wilderness is not a punishment. Like Jesus, we may be exposed to temptation's pull, but we are not alone. Angels are sent to be alongside, not to take our way our struggles, but to sustain us through them. And of course, God never leaves us. As we walk in faith through temptation and danger, we can emerge more grounded and mature in Christ. Our trust in him deepens through the darkness. As we return to lighter times, we will discover a new resonance and authenticity in our testimony of God's faithfulness. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled against him. Let us then renounce our willful, willfulness and ask his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Wash away all my iniquity. And, and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Create in me a pure heart, O God. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins, and restore you in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In full assurance that we are loved and heard, we bring our prayers to our faithful God. We give thanks for times when we have felt especially upheld by the prayers of God's people and know God's faithfulness to us. We pray for Christians worldwide holding fast to God's promise under persecution, that they would know God's provision and protection. We pray for those we know who have lost faith in God's promise to them, that they may see signs of God's unfailing love. Lord, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. We pray for our world with all its uncertainties about the future. We pray for scientists, thinkers and policymakers 
as they tackle the big issues of our times. We pray for leaders in all walks of life, pressured to make promises that they may struggle to deliver, that they may speak with integrity and act responsibly. Lord, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. We pray for the communities in which we live and work, for community leaders and for those who give their time in the service of others, that there may be peace among us. Lord, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill or in any kind of distress. May they find companions along the way and relief from their suffering. We remember with thank thanksgiving those who have died, praying that we may, at our own appointed time, join them to share in eternal life in God's kingdom. Lord, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. Lord, your heart is full of compassion, your hand strong to save. We commit our concerns to your loving wisdom and mighty power. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Collect for the First Sunday of Lent. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son battled with the powers of darkness and grew closer to you in the desert. Help us to use these days to grow in wisdom and prayer that we may witness to your saving love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen.
compassion, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have reconciled your people to yourself. As we follow his example of prayer and fasting, may we obey you with willing hearts and serve one another in holy love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.